Help support the companies that support our community. I started out by drilling a hole in the center so I could mount it on the lathe using the worm screw. Then I used a bowl gouge to round it over, kind of start to give it the shape on this. I went pretty slow with this. I didn't have the lathe above about three, 400 RPMs because it's off center. So it's kind of rocking around a little bit. So I went ahead and got the basic shape down on that. And then I went ahead on the back side of it and cupped it out a little bit and created a tenon so I could grab it in the chuck. This was a pretty large piece. When I started out, it was 24 inches, and then after I got it got it chipped, it's about 22 inches, but it's still pretty big, so I made a large tenon and then used the large jaws to hang onto it while I cleaned out the inside. Because of the bark enclosures on the back side of it, I couldn't actually just turn turn the whole piece. So I went ahead and just dished out the center of it, kind of like a bowl. I used a bowl gouge to do that. It was just quicker to do it this way than actually carve out all of that. Once I got that dished out, I brought the center part down to a cone. I wanted to leave the tail stock up as long as I could to help support it. And just brought that down with the number one hollower and then tapped that off. Then I switched tool rest so I could get inside a little closer and went down a little bit more in the center. So I was checking the depth on that where the, the bottom of it is minus the tenon and I just kind of cleaned it up a little bit before I started carving it. To do the carving on it, I pulled it off the lathe with the chuck still attached to it and mounted it on a carving stand. This is a great way to be able to maneuver it around with the stand. You can tip it any direction you want and that way it's easier to work on. So because of those bark enclosures, I wasn't able to get the sides of it down very far. Um, like where the bark enclosures are, it's probably an inch thick, but on the ends, it's still about six inches thick. So I used the Harbor Tech to, on both ends of it there, just carve all of that out, bring that material down quite a bit. So I went ahead and carved the whole thing with the, with the turbo plane. And then I went ahead and switched over and put the 60 grit pad on it to smooth everything over. And the 60 grit is like, it takes it down quick. So it's, uh, once you get it, get it shaped, I, what I was trying to do is I didn't want it to, you know, I wanted it to have a nice flow to it. So I was just feathering it out where the bark enclosures were to where I was doing. So it had a nice, nice curve to it on the inside. So I just I went ahead and did that. Uh, and then after I did the 60 grit, I switched over to the foam pad on my drill with 80 grit. And I ran through from 80 all the way up to 240. If you're going to use uh, epoxy on something, you don't want to go any higher than, than a 240, 220, 240 because it needs something to bite to. And I know it's it's wood, but um, even when you're doing in between coats, you want to just scuff it up with 240 because the epoxy needs something to bite to. So I went ahead and ran through up 240 with that. After I got that all sanded, I went ahead and put it back on the lathe. I wanted to bring down the center a little bit more. Um, as far as the shape goes, I wanted to flow right down into the drain. So I put it back on the lathe and I used the number one hollower to just clean out a little bit more material in the center. 
and then I just use the sanding pad because it dips down in there quite a bit and you really can't get the, the Arbortech, the grinder down in there. I just put 80 grit on there and smoothed that all out and then ran right back up to 240. I did have one little knot that had a little bit of rot in it, so I dug that out and then I filled it in with epoxy. I let that set up for about six, seven hours before I put the put the first coat on. So this, this is Art Coat. It has a UV protection in it. It does take 24 hours to dry, so a lot of the sink, other sinks are done, you'll see me use the quick coat, which works great, but this some stuff has some UV protection in it, so for something like maple, I really didn't want it to yellow at all, so I used this, and it works works fantastic. This first coat is basically it's just kind of like the seal coat. It's going to soak into certain parts of the wood a lot more than others, and it's just so getting a coat on there, and then the next one will actually be, be a lot better and, and smoother. I do put three coats on the inside and two coats on the back side, but after I got this one on, I had it on the lathe, so I turned the lathe on 50 RPMs and let that let that just spin for probably three, four hours before I turned it off. Um, it just kind of minimizes the, the runs on it and it works great. It keeps all the bugs from landing on it too. Um, so what I did is I got that all done, I torched it and let that set up overnight and I came back the next day and I drilled out for the drain. So I will have a link down below in the description for these. Um, this is the drains I use on all of the sinks. They don't have the overflow hole in the side of them, which you can't have if you're doing a wooden sink like this. It's probably, I would not recommend it. I'll put a link down below. The quality seems really good. They're, they're 20 bucks for them and I just got it off of Amazon. So. I just do the outside of it first, the actual ring around it, and just slowly go through, make sure that's right. And what I do is when I'm cutting these, I'm cut, back cutting it at an angle a little bit down towards the drain because they're they're tapered. So I just try and try and match that, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're gonna put uh, plumber's putty, it does have a, a rubber ring around it, but I would recommend plumber's putty for it. You just, put a ring a little noodle around it and smash it down and then wipe it off. It probably works better than the than the little O-ring. So I just did that, got it as close as I could, and then I used a Forstner bit. With the Forstner bit, go a little oversized because if they're, you don't want it too tight, if there is any kind of wood movement, you don't want it to lock that thing in place. So I, I believe they're inch and a half. I will check and at the end of the video, I'll, I'll, I'll come back and tell you exactly what they are, but I think they're about inch and a half. So I went just a little bit bigger with that than the Forstner bit. And I didn't drill all the way through. It's, it's, you don't need to. When you're all done with the third coat, you can just set it down on a, on a piece of wood and drill all the way through it. So I just drilled down at it an inch, inch or so with the Forstner bed, just enough to get a little bit of resin around there at this point. And then when I do the final coat, I'll drill all the way through and then do the final coat of resin and it'll get down in there. But just make sure make sure you oversize that the Forstner bit hole just a little bit. And and on the when you're doing the ring, the little flange for the drain, make sure it's dent down in there just a little bit more than you need because you're gonna coat it with resin and you don't want it to stick up. It'll hold water around there. So better to have it just under than, than above. After I got it all drilled out, went ahead and sanded it up with 240 just did the whole thing and put another coat of resin on it. This one again, I left it on the lathe when I did it. Um, I just sanded it, coated the whole thing again, and then came back the next day. So at this point, I pull it off of the lathe, flip it upside down. If on this one, um, I didn't like how the, the sides were kind of bulging up a little bit. So I took the Arbor Tech that turbo plane, I carved those down to just to have a nice smooth transition from the sides to the bottom and I went through the same process with that. I turbo plane 60 grit and then used the, the little sanding 
thing on the drill to go right up to 240 and then I went ahead and I put two coats on the bottom. I did one, let it set up overnight, come back, did the second one. And then what we'll do, and the reason I do that part right there is the bottom, I do the two coats on the bottom and, and it's finished, is because the resin is going to drip. So you don't want to do that last because you're going to have drips all the way around the rim. So what I do after that is all set up, then I'll flip it over, drill out the rest of the way for the drain, sand off all those drips around the side, sand the whole inside, and do the final coat. After that second coat on the bottom dried, I went ahead and put it back on the lathe, sanded all the drips off. I started at 120 to get those knocked down and then sanded it right back up to 240. And then before I put the final coat on the inside, I went ahead and drilled out the drain hole the rest of the way through and then coated the whole thing, making sure to get, get it all covered. I will bring you over here. Here it is, I got it all set up. I'll bring the camera over and show you how I, I put the little drain in. I don't put the, actually mount these in. I'm just gonna show you how, how it fits down in there. But I want a big thank you to ArborTech for hosting the MakerFest again. Thank you so much, guys. Had a great time. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're uh, here on live, I will see you over on Zoom. And if you have any questions uh, afterwards, you can always ask them below in the comments. I will answer them all. All right. Hope everybody has a great weekend and I hope you enjoyed the Maker Fest. Let me bring you over here real quick and I'll show you how the, how the drain goes in. So the drain has several of these little, little rubber washers. It all unscrews and these all come off put it in like that. Like I said earlier in the video, I would use the plumber's putty, make a small, small little noodle that goes around there and put it down inside, but it drops right down inside of there. It's nice and flush. So when you put that plumber's putty in there and tighten it up from the bottom, it will smash it all out and then you can just wipe that off. So the drain here, there's plenty of room for it to move around. So if there's any wood movement, the stop here, it just threads right in and it's push button. So that's up, drain, fill. Doubt anybody's gonna be filling it up to, I don't know, wash clothes in or anything, but it's pretty slick and then it comes up like that. So nice, clean, clean look to it. Um, like I said before, just make sure you get it sealed up good. I put, again, I put the three coats on it and I made several of these. I use the same same drains with all of them. And it doesn't have that, that vent hole in the side. So when you when they're mounted up, they'll, they'll take care of that part of it. But you don't want those because it condense, it, even if it didn't leak out, the warm water going down there would probably cause a problem. Even though I sealed that up, sealed that up you still don't, I wouldn't recommend doing that if you're gonna make a thing. But there we go. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Again, it's maple, 22 inches across this way. And oh, what do we got? About 18 that way. And it can be mounted in, either way, put the, Put the faucet over there or over there, whatever style you like. Uh, yeah, it can go. It could actually go this way too. But yeah, I'd probably, I would probably put the faucet over here. This is a steeper pitch, so you have the faucet coming down right here. But yeah, I love love making the things. All right, have a good one, guys.